Hi everyone, this is Reverend Dr. Katie again. As you can hear, I have a little bit of a cold and uh, it's been slowing me down just a little bit the past few days. And when I posted that, a lot of you told me that you also um, are feeling a little under the weather. So this is October 9th, 2017. It is the beginning of sniffles season for a lot of us. And then I heard from some of you that it's more than sniffles. And so I wanna offer you some healing graces and healing prayers and want to reflect just for a few minutes on on healing and the Bible. So throughout the whole Bible, we see people who are injured, who are ill, who seek healing. And of course, one of the major ministries of Jesus in the New Testament is that of healing and the apostles after him as well. And we see people who come who desire to be healed and who are healed. So I want to remind everyone that healing and cures can be different. So we can experience healing sometimes without experiencing a cure. No one lives forever in these bodies. Um, and so they are not designed for us to live forever. Uh, rather, we come, we learn, we learn partially through our bodies, through illness, through wellness. And our bodies do desire to be in a state of wholeness when they can be. And sometimes we get these viruses and the sniffles and sometimes more serious. And we have to learn how to deal and how to cope with those. So if you are like me, um, you might I find it difficult even when you are ill to take a little break. And it was funny because yesterday I had three people write into me at the same time and they said, are you resting? Are you taking a break? You're not, you're on your computer, even though you're not moving around, you're still trying to work. And they were right. Uh, I took that as a signal to put all my work down for a little while and to actually take some good rest. So I want to encourage everyone when you do have a little illness to go ahead, continue with your, maybe not even continue, but expand your time of meditation, of tuning into your chakras. If you've not yet downloaded your free gift from me, I'm going to post that right now. Please be sure to download that and invite that divine light into your crown chakra and let it diffuse throughout your whole body. Because oftentimes when we do that, we discover something that we need. So during that time of meditation and prayer, and go ahead and feel free to ask your angels to tell you what it is you need to be doing for yourself. We sometimes do find out, oh, I need to be eating this, or I need to not be eating that, or I need to lay down and rest. And we can follow those impulses of the body at that time. So I'm going to do a card reading in just a moment from this deck, from the Archangel Raphael healing deck. Excuse me. These sniffles give me a little, <laughs> give me the itches too. Uh, from the Raphael, uh, Archangel Raphael healing deck. Uh, it, Raphael appears in the Bible, but if you grew up Protestant, you may not recognize that name. So Raphael is an angel who appears in the book of Tobit. Tobit is a lovely, lovely little book. I encourage everyone to read it, but it is found in the Apocrypha or the Deuterocanon. So it's those books kind of in the middle between the Old Testament and the New Testament that are popular in Catholic, they're not popular, they are part of the Catholic Bible and the Orthodox Bible and sometimes Episcopal Bibles, but Protestant Bibles, they're not. The story of why they're not is a, is a whole other story. We can get into that later on. But the book of Tobit features a, a lot of healings, and the angel Raphael is disguised as a human throughout much of this story before Raphael is revealed. And then Raphael is also in the book of Enoch, which is not part of the Bible, but an important book for understanding how the ancient people were understanding angels in the ancient world. So there is your your little, uh, little historical lesson for today. So but these are healing decks and Raphael is known as an angel of healing. So I'm going to shuffle these. And ask for a card to come forward, which will grace us with everyone who is maybe not feeling well or maybe assisting someone who's not feeling well and exactly what we need for today. One more good shuffle. Hey, people writing in. It's good to see you. I don't always say your names on air because this goes on YouTube and on LinkedIn and stuff. So some of you may not want your names said out loud. So it's good to see you. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. 
Okay. These are beautiful cards. They have that Ouroboros with the, uh, not the Ouroboros, but the, the snakes or the vines that go with the stick with the angel's wings on them. Both, both signs of strong healing. Okay, so here's our card. Uh, this is nice. It says, have faith. And these have a prayer on them. The, this one says, dear Jesus and Archangel Raphael, Thank you for boosting my faith so that I may trust in miracles. And it has this picture of Jesus and an angel. And of course, we see in the Bible that angels are present with Jesus throughout key pivotal moments in his ministry, uh, in his ministry as well. And so this card is reminding us uh, to have faith, to trust in miracles. And I'll remind everyone that miracles can take many, many forms. Um, we are after healing where cures are nice, but they're actually not kind of our bottom line, not what we're seeking. So let me give you an example of that. Uh, someone who is on their deathbed may have radical instances of healing, even though they are not cured in their body. Right. And those healings can take the form of repair, a broken relationship, of coming to terms with their own life, of repair within their own soul and those are all moments of beautiful healing even though they are not cured so actually when we hold healing services in church at least when i do when i am facilitating those if a cure comes out of it i'm thrilled but i'm more interested in the healing so i've um i've met very few people who have undergone cures who are not also healed but on occasion, I do. There are some people who experience cures and then take them for granted. And so they don't always do the radical internal work that God is always, always calling us to do. And so that radical internal work um, can have manifestations in our outer body. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Um, but almost everyone I that I know would rather have the internal healing that happens uh, first. Right. And so that is really, uh, really a priority, especially as Christians. Not that we don't pay attention to the body because we do. We do. And so this card to have faith. Um, I'll just read it again for us. Dear Jesus and Archangel Raphael, thank you for boosting my faith so that I may trust in miracles. That's lovely. I hope that brings you some 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 measure of what you need for today for your own health and your own well-being. So I'll remind everyone that uh, I'm still processing and taking beta testers for the new program. If that is something you are interested in, you want to learn more about angels, more about your own healing, more about how to bring in these practices into your own life within the context of Jesus and of Christianity, please reach out to me. Just private message me, or you can also send me an email. Here we go. We have three people enrolled in the program already. I'm so excited. My goal was to get you all some um, preliminary videos today, but this cold has taken over my voice. And so it might be tomorrow or the next day before those get out. But um, I think we have a lot of people who are going to begin that next week. So I'm really excited about that. So I'm, I know we're going to be seeing healing on lots of different levels when that program is up and going and people are enrolling in it. So I would love to talk to you about it too. I think that is it for today. I will see you all later on this week and I will be in touch with what is coming next. So it's good to see you all and I'm signing off for now. Bye-bye.